Welcome back to Breaking Points Intercept Edition. I'm here with my Ryan Grimm, DC Bureau Chief of the Intercept, and here with my colleague Ken Klippenstein. We're going to talk about a couple of uh, Ken's stories leading to some impact on Capitol Hill today. But first, we want to start with Amazon. And so recently there was a letter uh, from Congress sent to Amazon. We could put that up here that was directed to David Clark, who was, what was his title, CFO? He was the CEO of the consumer side of the CEO business. CEO of the consumer side of the business. That w- demanding answers about something that you exposed, which was basically a, a chat app, a chat censorship app that was going to make it impossible for workers to use particular words. What kind of words was Amazon going to block its workers from saying to each other over this chat app? Yeah, so when this was first disclosed to me, what jumped out at me at, at the list was, was at first the uh, words pertinent to labor unions, which apparently there there are potential legal consequences because right. that's protected speech if, if workers want to mm-hmm. discuss uh, uh, organized right. We have labor. entire laws built around right. that. And, right, and they're just now starting to be enforced in some right. way. From, from mm-hmm. To his credit, Biden's NLRB has been enforcing these laws to an extent not seen. Probably the toughest agency. In Definitely. the Biden administration, yeah, yeah. Um, and so a number of them were about labor unions, and and uh, it, but but then I quickly realized there were other ones that were just about general working conditions, not directly related to organized labor. For example, you mm-hmm. can say you can say restrooms or bathroom, right. which let's has put, and let's put that article up. Well, yeah, restrooms, bathroom, and do you think that was because people are complaining that they don't get long enough restroom breaks, complaining about the stench in the restroom? Uh, or what else? Like, what, yeah. what do you, from your talking to workers, what's the rationale for blocking people from saying restroom? Because you would think if you, if it's a collaborative workplace, hey, I have to run to the restroom. Can you, you know, cover this thing? But no, you can't even do that. Right. So um, the impression that people had was just that they don't want them talking about. So I, I, I mentioned in the story um, that there was a high level meeting of Amazon ex- executives, including, um, including Dave Clark, in which they discuss, you know, how do we make an app? that uh, they have a problem with employee retention, which is interesting in mm-hmm. itself. They don't discuss in the meeting um, you know, why that is, but they say, so what are we going to do about it? They said, well, what if we create this internal chat app where workers can um, share positive uh, feelings and encouragement with each good other? Good vibes. Yeah, exactly. Good, a good, a good vibe. Good warehouse app. vibes. Yes. Yeah. And, and then uh, uh, quickly, uh, uh, it, was, it was raised, so what do we do about the, the dark side right. of social media, as they, as they put it at the meeting? And they said, well, we can just block and flag words that, that are going to make the Conversation negative, and and that happened to include this huge list of terms that wasn't just you know labor unions. As I said, it was bathrooms, it was fair pay, fair wages, uh-huh. things like that. Um, and the idea was that this is going to um, enhance employee retention, make people uh, increase employee satisfaction. Of course, without addressing the underlying causes. When you talk to you know workers, they say you know I, I'd be fine to stay here if we could improve the conditions. It's just that it wears you out so quickly. And so um, you know as we had reported in the past. They have these punishing quotas that they have right. to meet in the um, factories, and a consequence of that is that people are uh, urinating in bottles, defecating in bags to be able to, yeah. to meet these things. And I have, we had internal documents reflecting not only that that was happening, but that management was aware of it and that they had formalized policy around um, punishing people for those things. Right. And at the heart of all of this, to me, is their, cent- their central driving kind of ideology is represented in TOT, their t- time off task. Like this is how, this is this is the stat that workers are kind of saddled with, and so they have everybody monitored so effectively that if you're in the bathroom or if you are walking slower than they think you ought to be walking, if it's taking a little bit longer for you to do something, they'll start to register that you're off task, TOT, and you're only allowed a certain amount of TOT. And then you get a demerit, a couple of demerits, and you can just be summarily fired. You can be, my understanding too is, and I, I quoted some from some Amazon workers, you can actually just be fired just over the, like just by text, basically. Like your thing shuts off yes. and you're told you're done. Yeah. Because this TOT thing, the number came underneath the threshold that they wanted. And TOT was one of the, one of the abbreviations that you weren't allowed to say, which I found profound in the sense that to them, to Amazon, it's the most important thing, yet they won't let their employees say it. Right. So they are clearly 100% aware that it is something their employees hate. Because it w- because if it was something that the employees bought into, exactly. and we're like, you know what? We're all in this together. 
you know, people need their nose hair clippers in 24 hours, and we're gonna we're gonna get them these nose hair clippers. Uh, and they, you know, they do do important work. They're yeah. they're keeping they're oh, keeping yeah. the country supplied. Yeah, in the absence of a uh, go- any sort of government run right. logistics network, we have to rely or, and, on and in, private businesses. In, in the re- wake of the retail apocalypse, right? Like, they, they are, you know, they're do- they are actually legitimately doing uh, important work. Some of the some of the nose hair clippers, probably not that big of a deal, uh, but. If they believed in that mission, and they believed, if the workers believed that time off task was essential to making that hum, then they wouldn't have it on the list as something only negative. Was there anything else on there that you could that 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 you could say was ambiguous, or what? Like what what made up the rest of the list? Well, some of it was even. Um, kind of like what you might call social justice terms. Like I think the word equality oh, yes. is one of them, which or is some, just so, like, right. that is a broad term. Yes. You know, and as I was talking to people about it, uh, workers are saying, well, there might even be use of these terms outside of the political context in which they're concerned about. Yeah. That's going to make communicating difficult. Um, so, uh, I mean, it was, a, they unfair. cast, a, they cast stuff a, like unfair. They yeah. cast a wide net. It's so interesting to me, the discourse in the United States the obsession with with Orwell and the idea of Big Brother, the state, and not that that's not a concern, but in my experience, the people with the really scary tools are private corporations, mega corporations right. like Amazon, uh, people who, in fact, are uh, uh, contracting with the federal government to provide them a lot of services. I had a conversation with an FBI um, counterintelligence officer um, some time ago, and he was, and I was asking him about their capabilities, and he said, "You know what we're really jealous of? Amazon. We uh-huh. wish we could have what they, Amazon they, and Google. I wish we had that." that. And yeah. I was like, "The FBI is jealous of right." <laughs> All right, so Congress sends this letter to Dave Clark. Then what happens? Um, and then uh, the very next day, he announces his resignation, which came as a shock to a lot of yeah. Amazon. And he's been there watchers. for how long? Uh, I think over two decades, yeah. an, an extremely you know high level position CEO yeah. of the consumer side, and the face of a lot of this stuff. Mm-hmm. He was one of the guys that was tweeting at Bernie Sanders saying, you know, you claim you're a progressive. Well, we just gave workers fifteen dollars an hour. We're the real progressives. How about that? And just clearly antagonizing. Right. Is he the one who famously clapped back at Mark Pocan? Yes. And said, so pe- for people don't remember this one, that Mark Pocan said something like. You're, you guys are so exploitative of your workers that they're, they have to piss in bags. And he's like, that's Dave Clark claps back. That's misinformation. Shame on you. You know, whatever, yeah. he's, whatever he said to him. And then you chimed in. And then, you cl- cl- and then at that point, in. I start talking to, because I've been reporting on this for a while. Mm-hmm. I knew people on Amazon, and they were just laughing at the, like, not only is it true, it is so prevalent that every, that it, it's, it's not something that's it's unknown memos, to anybody. memos, there are policies yeah. around it. And we were right. able to substantiate that on a document basis, not even just interviews with workers, but like showing that it was formalized in policy, how they're going to respond to this, yelling at workers, saying, yeah. stop doing this, <laughs> without addressing why it's happening. So um, I think a lot of workers, I, I know that on a, on, in the sense of getting sources to talk to me, they were really motivated by how dishonest and disingenuous the company was being and talking about something like that. Yeah, and I think that Clark stepping down the day after this letter came out, I think is a, an admission that this like, clapping back kind of arrogant approach that Amazon is taking isn't isn't the way to move, particularly because the Senate is considering whether or not to pass legislation in the next couple of weeks that would ban it and a couple other companies, but uh, Amazon being a primary target of it, ban it from favoring its own products, which is central to its profit margins. Right, and which I understand from uh, staffers on the Hill, there's a lot of frustration on the part of Congress at Amazon's cavalier attitude not just uh, towards you know uh, uh, worker conditions, but even towards Congress, they are not responding right. to document requests that um, that Congress has been sending them. Yeah, Congress doesn't demand that you treat workers well, but they demand <laughs> that you treat Congress well. Right. So that right, could, you're on our turf now. Yes, you better that could start. Cost them. Anyway, great reporting. We're going to talk about uh, some more impact that uh, some of our reporting had on Jared Kushner and his uh, future investments. So s- stick ar- stick around for that. This has been an episode of Breaking Points. The Intercept, and if you have a tip for Ken, you can find his number on Twitter, or if you want to just give it to him. 202-510-1268. Use Signal. Yes, use Signal. I have open DMs, so don't only use that if it's something that 
you, you, you're okay with the NSA reading. <laughs> All right, we'll see you soon. Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society, and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.